Do you like my YouTube videos? If you do, please leave a comment and actually click on the like button. And if you want, you can hit subscribe. That way you can stay up to date with all my YouTube videos. Hey, and go ahead and click that bell icon to be notified. Thanks. Take care, guys. Hey, Reptile Rescue family. How is it going? Today is going to be an important video, and I'm amped up. And that means so is Simba. But wait, you're like, what? We're talking about Reptile Shed. But we're over here at Simba, who's not shedding. Or is he? He is. He's almost always shedding. But we're going to go into sheds, different types of sheds, for different types of reptiles. How do they grow? How do they shed? And um, when do you help them? When do you not? Most of the time you don't, although sometimes you have to. Uh, and it's important to know when. Hi, buddy. Hey, I mean, but when we come over and we look at Simba, guys, you can't help but be like, who's such a good boy? You can't help but want to pet this guy. He loves his little massages and his scratches. Look at that fast tongue. He's like, this is freaking great. So I thought we'll start with Simba because this is an adult. We'll talk about him as a child, baby, move on and know that typically, typically babies, reptiles of the same species, lizards, will shed the same way as almost all babies do. They may require a different environment to shed, but they shed the same. But then as they become adults, different things happen. So most lizards, as babies, because their whole body is growing, will shed their entire body. It won't come off as one piece, but their entire body will go into a shed. Why is that? Why do reptiles shed? So reptile skin, unlike human skin, which our skin can just keep expanding and expanding and expanding, stretching, stretching, stretching as we get larger, whether we're getting fatter, taller, we're just growing more muscle, or when we are, let's say, overweight, but then we lose weight, our skin will shrink. Reptile skin, it doesn't work like that. Okay, reptile skin can only grow a finite amount. What does that mean? Everyone's like, what does fine mean? It can only grow so big before it hits the limit of that skin. And so what does the reptile have to do? It has to grow new skin to the appropriate size. So basically, once you stretch the skin so much, the, rep the outer layer, the top layer of skin, since they have multiple layers, the top layer, the dry layer, once that gets to its full size and it can't go anymore, the reptile has time to go and the layer be below that which is more wet, which can stretch, gets pushed up to the top and becomes the new top layer of skin. So when they're a baby, they're almost always constantly growing, growing everywhere. And so you'll see them shed their whole body. We're talking about lizards. Well, when they get older, they don't grow like that. Maybe only certain sections of their body will be growing. They'll start to shed in more patches and more areas. So if we see Simba, he's got a little bit of shed here on his neck. His cranium is almost always shedding because his brain is growing. His tail, when, when you have a reptile that has a banded tail like that, okay, this is what's important. Do you see how it's more white in this area? Because that area has shed. His tail actually will shed, and there's some dirt down there, but that's all white. His tail actually will shed each band, each strip, individually when it's ready to go that's what's pretty cool so whenever a section of his tail gets too big that particular band will shed off that's how he sheds now he likes to shed by going in the water it helps loosen his skin it helps take it off um, makes it loose he can scratch it off he can rub it off he doesn't like to shed dry when it gets dry you get little patches see these little patches of dry, uh, stuck shed right here we'll work on those in his bath we'll soak them a little light toothbrush we can clean this off but that's a little bit of stuck shed because he doesn't keep his head underwater but so they like humidity and tub he'll soak himself when it comes time to shedding so what about chameleons? They typically like a humid environment, um, and it's a little bit different for some chameleons, but they are really good dry shedders. Chameleons like their body to be dry when they shed. They like to pop off an extremely thin layer of skin and poof, pop out of it. Now, a chameleon, as an adult, typically will shed 
its entire body everywhere. Although it'll come off maybe in a little bit of patches, right? Because it's not a solid piece. They will go into a full body shed even as adults, which is pretty cool. Wow, look at Guido just slowly bending his tail into that typical chameleon curve that we've seen. That's his butt down there. But um, it's very interesting. Now, chameleons, when they shed guys, they can have trouble walking. So you see how his feet open like this and they grip? Well, that inner piece of skin on the bottom of their foot, that often sheds. And it often comes out of the bottom piece, but it hasn't come out of the top piece yet. Making it almost like a plastic or a rubber glove that they're wearing, and they can have a really hard time with their grip. So you should be careful not to spook, not to scare your chameleon when he's shedding because he could have really loose grip. And a lot of people don't notice that, and I see a lot of chameleons falling. Now an animal that almost never gets stuck shed in the correct environment is a Chinese water dragon. Why is that? Well, you have humidity at about 75% and you have a deep water pool where it's able to swim, chill out, cool out. So when this animal goes in the shed, it already has extreme high humidity, but it likes to water shed. You should typically find shed in the water or at least when it's shedding, it will be real loose. I just love water dragons. Look how they just chill out. She's just like, what the heck do you want? What are you watching me? What are you talking to me for? And look, having the doors opened, the humidity obviously left. So the, the fogger turns on, it's gonna pump humidity. There's a humidistat hidden. It's hanging back there to measure the air humidity. So we know, okay, it's time to come on. We're gonna shut the door. But yeah, these guys water shed. It's really nice. They will shed most of their body when they shed even as adults. It kind of peels backwards. It's pretty cool. Okay, bearded dragons. This is something that sheds quite often as a baby and a juvenile that's growing and then slows down extremely to possibly shedding once a year or less as an adult. We're going to look at Archimedes here, but it applies all around. Bearded dragons do an extremely dry shed. It is very hard for an adult bearded dragon to get stuck shed when it's in a proper environment, but it can happen. But they, and then you would just soak them, but they do an extremely dry shed in sections. Um, if, and, and honestly, the most satisfying section, I know it's satisfying to pull the stuck shed out of the nostrils. That's really cool, sometimes the under lip, but the most satisfying to me is the back. It's the back meat. When you peel back and you get to remove a huge back flap that's the whole size of the bearded dragon and it includes the soft spikes on the side, that is so cool and so fun. What? She's like, what the heck am I doing out? I was basking. She wasn't in brumation yet, so I chose her. But yeah, they all do sections. You'll see their back legs. You'll see their tail. Um, you can see that this is new skin right from the shed. And then as you get down... Look, it gets duller here. This is still old skin that has not shed yet. So she shed her front legs, her sides underneath. The other cool thing about bearded dragons, and I'm going to lift her, is a lot of times they get a little bit dirty and a little bit stained underneath. She looked really clean, a bright white, although she has a pattern on her stomach. But some bearded dragons that are all white on the stomach, when it comes time for them to shed, one of the coolest things is then their stomach is bright, clean white because it hasn't been stained yet. It hasn't gotten dirty um, and it's nice to see. But yeah, they're dry shutters, dry, dry, dry shutters. Okay, so what about tegus? Well, I've done videos, guys, on tegu shed. You should look it up. When they're small, tegus shed most of the time their whole front body and then their tail. They'll shed two sections. But the way they step out of their shed, I'm just going to make it brief, they kind of like flex and then they step out of their entire shed almost like a molt. Um, and it's really cool. When they're crazy, like this guy, you'll see patches of his skin everywhere because he sheds and he runs around. But it's really cool, but that's typically how they do it. Sup, psycho? I'm going over the more common pets that we have. I'm going to hit turtles and snakes last. And I'm not going to talk about the frilled dragon or the basilisk because 
most people don't have those as pets. So what we're going to talk about right now before we move on to those, we're going to talk about the tortoise and we're going to talk about the leopard geckos. So the tortoise is quite interesting. A tortoise does shed its skin. Let's not talk about the shell yet. It does shed its skin. Um, and you typically won't see it shed because they'll just come off in little flakes that normally just moves around when your tortoise is moving. If you have a really big tortoise, it is common to find stuck shed in the neck because um, it just gets stuck. The neck skin is more loose, so it doesn't break off all the way. And these guys are dry shedders, dry, dry, dry shedders. Well, what about leopard geckos, common pet? And I was hoping to find one in the humid hide, and we did. We found Orion chilling in his hide, so I'm gonna bring the camera down here. Leopard geckos shed in a humid hide. They know to do this, and it's very important. So they will go to their humid area, and they will lay in it. Leopard geckos, even when adults, will shed their entire body, 100%, tip of the tail, to the toes, to the nose. It all comes off. And when it comes off, they eat it. They will peel the shed off with their mouth, and they will eat the shed for the, for the vitamins. Because in the wild, you know, vitamins are more limited, and they have to eat what they can get. But they need a humid hide to do this. Now, it is, oh, hi, Ra Orion. He's coming to check this out. He's like, what, what is this camera? What, what are you doing? You are like a, so funny to me. What a great guy he is. He's so friendly. He's checking, to, oh, Ryan, back, back up. Oh, good God. Um, but so it's very important you have a human hide. It's also very important that you realize when your leopard gecko is shedding because he will turn very white, very opaque looking. He's not sick. He's getting ready to shed. And then he, you know, he's white, he's white, that skin's gonna come off, and then it comes off. It's very important that you check their fingertips when this happens. Because a leopard gecko who struggles to shed, two things can happen. One, the shed can make them lose the fingertips. But two, if you don't have a proper humid hide, the shed can get stuck on the fingertips. And this has not happened to Orion because he has a humid hide. But while shedding, they can struggle to get it off their fingers. So what will they do? They'll end up biting their finger off to take the shed off. That's right, they bite and eat their own fingertips. It's very important you have the shed under control and that you have a humid hide and that you look at leopard geckos after a shed. Do you need to soak them in a humid hide for 10, 15 minutes and then roll the shed off? Okay, last but not least, we're talking about snakes and turtles. Snakes and turtles. These are two guys who shed completely differently but do shed their whole body but not all at one time. Well, I just said a lot really fast. Here's Soraya, she's real beautiful, not in shed. Here's Tetra, she's so beautiful, not in shed. Here's Ahsoka, she's so beautiful, going into shed. Why is that? What's going on? So snakes always, no matter how old, will shed their entire body. What will happen though, is as they get older, they will shed less frequently but they're shedding for the same reason. They're growing and their old skin is old. But the way a shake sheds is interesting. Snakes are humid shedders, okay? We're gonna get out of here because she's getting a little scared. And that's okay because I have another shedding snake who's a big snake who will not be scared. So snakes are humid sh shedders. As you can see, there's some humidity here. So. Being a humid shutter, snakes need two things. One is obviously they need the humidity brought up. You can do that by misting the substrate, misting the sides of the tank. That will increase the humidity in the tank. Snakes, because they shed their whole body, they secrete a blue liquid between their new layer of skin and their old upper layer of skin. So what will happen is it's called going blue or in a blue phase or in deep blue the snake's eyes will turn blue. Why is that? Because the snake's eye cap, the skin, the layer of skin on the top of the eyeball is a thin layer of skin. That needs liquid as well to help it shed. Well, it's so clear, the eye cap, that eye skin is so clear that you're actually able to clearly see the blue liquid under it. And this will actually blind the snake 
when they're in that deep blue phase, um, there's her eyes, they're blue, and it will make it hard for them to see. But that is what moistens the inner skin, and then your humidity moistens the outer skin, and what they do is they stretch their mouth open, and that breaks the shad, and then they rub against something, and they crawl right out of their skin. I personally, when snakes shed, like to bump humidity to between 60 and 65%. That's me. They, sh they will come out of their shed. Typically, really good no-stuck shed. Then you have this creature here, the turtle, the aquatic turtle. They shed. They shed in two places. So their skin, their soft skin, sheds just like a tortoise. But you know what also sh sheds? Their shell. The scoots of their shell, when they grow, they will shed. Guess what? Turtles quite often have stuck shed. I know, isn't that hard to believe? A turtle, something that's in the water, you know, an aquatic turtle that's in a water 85% of the day has stuck shed. How is that possible? It is almost always on the back. And if we actually look, Bertha is about to shed two pieces of the back of her uh, scoots there. Normally, you'll see dark black, big chunks in the bottom. That's normally scoots from the turtle, and that means they're shedding. But they still get stuck. And a way you can notice the stuck shed is you'll see air bubbles on the shell. Well, they're underneath the top layer because it's lifted somewhere, but it hasn't come all the way off. <sighs> and this leads to the problem. So here we are. I've got some different reptile sheds. But what you need to know is a turtle almost always, almost always is living with stuck shed. What? Yes, um, almost always, and it has to do with the scoots. How do I know this? Why do I know this? Well, I know this from keeping turtles, but we'll talk about it. And then we've got different turtle uh, scoots in here, like this is from Big Bertha. Look at how big it is. But a turtle, when they shed their scoots, they almost never come off when it's just one layer. And a lot of times there's a lot of buildup. Like if we look at this scoot from Bertha, remember she's in the water, you see this? There's, there's more than one layer here. Uh, and it is easier to come off when it's multiple layers. And you can see it in some of the, the scoots because the, even this one, you can see how clear this area is here and then how much darker it is over there. And if you were to feel it, it's quite thicker, but you can actually typically see that layer. So yeah, a turtle, is unfortunately, here's another one. This is a perfect example. You see the two-tone in color at the top, it's more clear. And then at the bottom starting here, it's darker and you can feel it and you can even really pick up the other layer. Um, a turtle, unfortunately, it's very rare to see a turtle. Here's another one where it's more than one piece. It's clear and then it gets darker at the top. A turtle very rarely sheds when it's just that one little thin scoot that it should shed off because they just get trapped and they get trapped and what happens is this one you can see as I drop it in the pile different layers on it because different thicknesses um, they get trapped and they actually create a vacuum that pulls down the shed. So even when it's disconnected everywhere, because of the water, because of the pressure, it can create a vacuum that can keep this stuck onto your turtle. When it's just a layer or two, it's not a big deal. When they get thicker like this, you should, and you start to see a lot of those bubbles, typically you see bubbles when it's thicker, you can help the turtle. I have a whole video of helping Big Bertha take her entire scoot. One of each scoot comes right off the top, the bottom, the sides. Um, and so this is, this is turtle shell. This is turtle shed of the shell. The, the loose skin you're not going to find. This is that dry bearded dragon, you know, Archimedes skin, which we've seen. And then this is some snake shed. It's sometimes rare to get perfect snake shed because they have to rub against things to take their shed off. It's very common that you'll get rips in the shed. What's also very common, and it didn't happen in this one, is that there'll be poop in the shed because as the snake is exerting itself, squeezing and tensioning all those muscles, it poops, and then it ruins the perfect shed. Uh, all right, guys. Thanks for watching. Hope this helped. Take care. Thank you guys for supporting my reptile rescue family.